What's going on everybody? It's your boy Caesar, and we are talking about some mining stocks today. Uh, I talked about any in my stocks video. I actually just found out that it is a, it's a mining stock as well. So it should have been in this video, but if anybody wants to see any, uh, the, the analysis for a N Y check out that most recent stock video that I, that I posted. Um, but without any further ado, let's get into this. This is the order of the list that we're going in right now. We're going to talk about hut first and foremost for Delui. Hive and Bit Farms for Honcho, and then Clean Spark for Navi, and that's it. Yeah. So let's do this. Looking at Hut, yes, you uh, you started the week off with a bang to the downside, ten percent down. Um, I'm not a fan of the way that it looks. I don't like this rejection. Off the, I, I really don't like the week the RSI. It to me implies that you would go lower from a low point to a high point here relative to this like range. You're below your 618 again. You closed your day below the 618 again. I don't like that. You have higher lows going for you. That's nice. Daily RSI looks like ass as well. I would think you are going to your 786. That's like your next logical level on a FIB perspective. Um, but you're not showing too, too much respect on these FIBs, really, are you? Like, not not really at all. So maybe this isn't the right FIB to draw, or maybe you won't find support at the 786. Maybe you go below it. So below 570 is where I think you're going, personally. You look like you want to get oversold, so I would think that you'd want to go down there. Now, tomorrow, you could move up. You could move up to about 770. You're at $7.08 down. Maybe move up to 770, but then you move down again. It's It's been very choppy on the way down. Um this is a kind of like broadening, it's like a megaphone pattern, right? One, two, three, four. You could move up because megaphone patterns are known for five legs. I mean, this, I don't think that's your first leg. This would be your first. It'd be one, two, three, four. And they are known to have five. But I don't know. All it takes is a little bit further down, and maybe this, this is or isn't a megaphone pattern. Maybe instead it was like a, a channel upwards like this something like that and you've already broken out of it to the downside you know maybe maybe it was something like this and you're already breaking it so hard to say the rsi itself does help me kind of determine that you you, you look like you want to move lower let's look at the three hour yeah i i don't like it man i think you want to go lower so with that being said i mean unless you bounce from here and sustain prices from here and break this lower high pattern um like really you'd have to get above like probably nine dollars from here and have to do it immediately holding this low unless you do that you're likely going to go below 570 is my best guess let's see let's do this real quick top to bottom relative fib not respecting the fibs at all man which is fine whatever it's a low cap you know I'm just gonna look at this. I'm gonna look at extensions already. 5:30, yeah. 5:30 to 4:30. It's probably where you're going. Relative to these lows, it makes sense to me. Below this low, yeah. I think so, man. I think Hut wants to go. I think it wants to see a big old dump, man. Soon. It's in the midst of it. I mean, it's been doing that since it was at 10. Now it's at seven. Looks like it wants to go lower. If I'm wrong on that, um, you would probably look to bounce tomorrow or at least not drop significantly lower um, over the, the rest of the week. Like you have to hold this area. That That's not an opinion. Like, I mean, I guess it's an opinion, but you have to, like you literally have to hold this area. If you go too much lower, it becomes undeniable in my opinion that you're going to see prices around 530 to maybe 430, you know, something like that. That's hut. Um, let's talk about hive. Hive Digital, it looks the exact same, man. It looks the exact same. It does. There's a little more hope for Hive, though. Because you're so near your, your oversold zone already, and you've been resilient with it, and you have a lot of support coming down here. So I would think at the lowest, you probably go to like 280. If not, maybe you do hold that $3 area. You're at 313 now, so a little bit lower to go. Let's look at the three hour. Yeah, the three three hour looks sad, but you're you're getting to the points where I would expect you to turn around soon. And you could tomorrow, you could come up to like three forty five, but I still think you do have lower to go. I don't like the weekly RSI, I don't, and I don't like the way the price looks. So you better hold that two eighty area, because if not, you're going down to like two forty or 
or lower, man. You might be going all the way down to like $2 itself. So hold that 280 area so we don't run that risk, but I do think you're moving lower. You might not even go to 280. Maybe you go to 290. You're at 313 now, so you're really close one way or another. But uh, uh, yeah, anyways, that's Hive. Bit Farms. Bit Farms. Bitty, bitty, bit Farms. Bearish divergence confirmed and completed technically, so you don't have to move too much lower, but let's just see here. Maybe 225. You're at 240 right now. Maybe move to 225. Yeah, I like I like that 220, 225 area. Yeah. If you don't find support there, you're going to 206. And if you don't if you don't hold 206, guys, you're going to a dollar 56, a dollar 22, and that would still be a higher low. So yes, you can drop that low, and it's still okay. Um, and for anybody saying that would be a lower low than this, sure, yes, it would, but this low was lower than this low and look at how fine that played out for you right it's the significant low in my opinion was this low like und indisputably right it wasn't this low over here and like this looks like a pretty significant low but i would bet that if you were to go below this low um you would see you would find a more significant looking low essentially is all i'm trying to get at so um if you don't hold what price was it it was like 220 to 225 if you don't hold that you're running the risk of going down to two dollars and six cents and if you don't hold that man you're going down to a dollar fifty a dollar twenty two something like that yeah that's bit farms let's finish this bad boy up with clean spark actually hold on i want to give this a little bit more yeah weekly bearish divergence whatever lower lows higher lows not a bad look actually um, i just don't like the way that your daily RSI looks. This does tell me you want to go lower. So, yeah, hold hold that level, man. Hold that 206 level. As you go on, as the days go on, if you take your time, this green line will come up as well, providing more support. So hold that 206, 205 level. That's all I'm saying. You can go below it, but don't close below it. It's okay to wick below it, right? You wicked, you wicked down here, but you didn't close down here. Like, wick, wicking is okay, but just don't close below 206. Um, if you close at 205, okay, fine. Or 204 even, okay, fine, whatever. But like, don't you, you know what I mean by when I say close, I mean break. Don't break it. Um, you can bend it maybe, but don't break it. Anyways, clean spark, right? Yeah, CLSK. Yeah, hell of a drop today. Um, I know I was more bullish on it yesterday, or not yesterday, but but over the weekend, right? Because I said you have this kind of head and shoulders look. But the thing is, is I don't know if this is a head and shoulders because this this right shoulder already last week on Friday, it was shrugged up and you're even more shrugged now. That's a pretty bearish candle, man. That is a pretty bearish candle with decent volume to back it up. The daily RSI looks like it wants to go lower, man. Um, and that is one, two, three drives or technically two drives of bearish divergence of which formed back here at $16. So... Um, you know, inevitably, I've been saying that I do think you're going to see prices down here at 1190. I, I've been saying that, but I just I remember in my last video I said we might move up first, like 24, 26, maybe 31. I forget what I said, um, but it looks like those might be off the table unless we get a hell of a reversal, man. Which <laughs> Clean Spark likes to mess with us. It really does. Um, perfect example right here, right? Weekly bullish engulfing candle. It engulfed one week, two weeks of price action. You actually closed above the three previous weeks of closing prices in one week, and then you dumped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bearish engulfing candle engulfed one, two, three weeks, and then you pumped. That was your low. So this chart loves to mess with us. Could it be doing that now? Could this be a shakeout? You're still up in this consolidation range. You have the potential to reverse, and you have the capacity to reverse in a very short amount of time. We know this thing likes to pump. It can pump 23% in a day. The next day followed up by, I mean, it didn't pump close on a closing basis. It didn't pump hard, but it opened up pretty high from a $20 price close to a $23 price open. I mean, this thing can pump in a very short amount of time, but will it is the question. I don't like that daily RSI. I don't like the price action, I, the, the volume, whatever. And the thing is too, man, Every single time. I've talked about this every Clean Spark video I've made for a while, right? Not a while, but like the past few weeks. Um, weekly closing high right here on from this pivotal point right here, weekly closing high. 
found support on it right there. Like literally went to it, went a little bit below it. Next weekly closing high, not the weekly price high, but the closing high, you went a little bit below it again, taking that same kind of idea, the weekly closing high, I would think you do go below 1190, 1189 before moving up significantly higher from here. Um, so that's, that's that. Three hour also looks like it wants to go down, man. So yeah, one hour doesn't look good. Yeah, it might want to go down. And if for anybody that's going to write in the comments, how is Bitcoin moving up but the mining stocks are going down? I don't know. I, they, don't, they don't have to move in unison, right? Bitcoin doing well doesn't mean that the uh, mining stocks are necessarily doing well. I mean, yes, they're going to make more money for every Bitcoin that they're, that they're mining, but the halving is coming up. Some of these companies like CleanSpark are buying facilities, right? There couldn't be other things. Like, I, I don't know. Let's look, let's look up the news. I never do this, but CLSK news. Bullish. <laughs> Just bullish news. All the good news, right? And it's doing bad things. Like, look at that. Top hit 18 hours ago. CleanSpark is up this, but it, it dropped heavy today. Uh, shares gap up. Wow. So there's no reason for it. Um, maybe, maybe the reason for it is it's just so bullish. Everybody's got their heads in the clouds with it. Um, it's seen a lot of volume. It's at high points in this kind of channel. You can see it with your naked eye, right? Like if you draw a straight line, it's, it's kind of at the high points. Maybe it's just time for it to go down. It's just standard volatility coming down is not a bad thing. That's healthy, right? Finding a higher low is not a bad thing. It's been good every single time. It gives you an opportunity to get in and the people promoting these stories, they're the ones that are going to scoop it up from the people who panic, who, who FOMO buy up here. And then when it dumps down here, they're going to panic sell the people putting these stories out there to make you think that you're confident and competent in, in buying up here. And that it's just going to go to the moon without any remorse. Those people are going to buy from you down here when you panic sell. So don't panic sell. If you've bought recently, it's okay. It's okay to be in the red. Take it from the guy that whenever I made my first purchase on this thing, it was on this week right here. I bought right here. I had to deal with it in the red all this time. And then dude, it, it's been doing great. It's been doing great. Yes, yes. I've, I, I had put options here. I fudged those. I had to let them go for a loss, whatever. But but that's okay, man. You can't get everything right. And beyond that, I hold the stock. So even though I let, let go of my put options for a loss, I'm still in the green with the stocks. I'm still making money even when I'm wrong. That's when you're doing it right. Whenever you're making money, even when you're wrong, you guys, that's when you're doing it right. Don't worry about trying to make the maximum amount of money because if you do that, you're, you're going to screw yourself. The quickest way to lose money is to try to do it fast. The quickest way to make money is to do it slowly. Think about the long term, if, if that makes any sense. Um, and that's why I hold the stock because in the long term, I think this thing is going to do well as well. But I'm, I'm just talking at this point. Ah, you do have weekly bearish divergence. I failed to mention that. Kind of have a double top here, but one, two, three. That is three tops, double bearish divergence of which formed, you guessed it, back at this high, which means you guessed it. You have a date with destiny to prices below 1190. I think it's inevitable. Um, to be fair, this drive of bearish divergence between these two highs is not confirmed until this week closes in four days. So let's see how the week closes right now. It doesn't look like it's off to a good start. Do not be swayed if tomorrow we pump, right? Don't be swayed if you get tomorrow, we get a pump that's like 20% up because it's still just another lower high, still just another uh, lower high. We pumped from low to high here. We pumped all the way up technically 44% and look at the day that we just had. You know what I mean? So this thing likes to mess with us. It just, it does. So probably going down inevitably, regardless of what happens in the, the short term stuff, I think over the weeks to come, maybe even months, we're going down below $12 and or below 1190. But that's all I got. That's all I want to say. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more. I do think that a lot of these mining stocks have a lot more room to grow over the cycle. We're just a little overextended right now. Seeing some standard volatility, seeing a pullback, it's healthy. People are going to take profits. They've made money, right? Anybody that bought in down here, you had a whole lot of time to buy between $9 and $640. You had a whole lot of time to buy between those prices. You're at $1691 now. You went all the way up to $23. Like people are taking profits. It's it's normal. It's healthy. It's good. You know, and shaking out the weak hands is also good. But anyways, take care. Hit that like button. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.